Hello, my name is Julie Beischel, and I'm Director of Research at the Winbridge Research Center. I have been performing laboratory research with American mediums full-time since 2003. People called mediums experience regular communication from the deceased and report the resulting messages to the living friends or relatives of the deceased called sitters during specific events called readings. My research has been published in numerous peer-reviewed journals and I've contributed chapters to multiple academic anthologies as well as to Leslie Kane's book, Surviving Death. I currently perform research at the Winbridge Research Center, a charity dedicated to performing rigorous scientific research and creating free educational materials focused on dying, death, and what comes next. The mediumship research we perform has three main arms, information, operation, and application. Today, I'll be focusing on information. The information research program investigates the content of the readings the mediums provide, as well as its accuracy and specificity. In a normal reading, there's just the medium and the sitter. If the medium provides accurate information, they may be legitimately communicating with the deceased. However, other factors could be involved that we have to address during research. The medium could be using fraud or deception. They could have looked up information about the sitter or the deceased prior to the reading. They could be using what's called cold reading, where they use sensory information from the sitter, things like facial expressions, gasps, even scents, to fabricate what seems to be an accurate reading from the deceased. Cold reading can also include the medium reporting information so general it could apply to nearly anyone. During research, we address the alternative explanations for the medium's accuracy using what's called masking or blinding of the people involved. We don't allow the medium any information about, access to, or contact with the sitter. In addition, the mediums are asked specific questions about the appearance, personality, activities, and cause of death of the deceased. These factors address fraud as well as cold reading. The reading takes place over the phone with an experimenter serving as a proxy for the absent distant sitter. But if that experimenter had information about the sitter or the deceased person, they could intentionally or inadvertently cue the medium during the reading. To address cueing by the experimenter, that experimenter only interacts with the mediums and a different experimenter consents the sitters for research and trains them about their tasks prior to the reading taking place. To test the accuracy of the reading, we give the absent sitter a transcript of the reading and ask them to rate the accuracy of each medium of each of the medium statements and give the overall reading a score. The sitter is the only person qualified to score a reading for how well it applies to them. But now another alternative explanation may be responsible for a reading scored as accurate. When someone knows a reading was intended for them, their accuracy scores may not reflect reality due to what's called rater bias. Based on their personalities, some people will score nearly every item as accurate, and some will score very few items as such. To address this, the medium provides a reading for a second sitter, and each sitter scores each reading as to well it, it applies to their deceased loved one without knowing which, which reading was intended for them. The sitters also choose which of the two readings they think was intended for them and their deceased loved one. This requires a third experimenter who interacts with the sitters during scoring. This published peer-reviewed protocol involves five levels of blinding. One, the medium is blinded to information about the sitter and the deceased before, during, and after the reading and asks questions about the deceased's appearance, personality, activities, and cause of death. Two, the sitters do not hear the readings as they occur they score blinded transcripts of two readings, one for their deceased, which we call a target reading, and one for another sitter's deceased, which we call a decoy reading, without knowing which is which. Three, the experimenter who consents and trains the sitters, experimenter one, is blinded to which mediums read which sitters and which readings were intended for which sitters. Four, 
the experimenter who interacts with the mediums during the phone readings and formats the readings into item lists for scoring, experimenter two, is blinded to information about the sitters and the deceased. Five, the experimenter who interacts with the sitters during scoring, that is emails and receives by email the blinded readings, experimenter three, is blinded to all information about the deceased, to which medium perform which readings, and to which readings were intended for which sitter. This fully masked or quintuple blind protocol addresses the normal explanations for the source of a medium's accurate reading. Using this protocol, we collected accuracy data from 58 readings performed by 20 pre-screened mediums. The results from the analysis of that data were published in a peer-reviewed journal article in 2015. The results demonstrated that blinded sitters scored the items in target readings intended for them as significantly more accurate than they scored items in decoy readings for other sitters. This difference was statistically significant. The overall reading score data had a similar statistically significant finding. In addition, a large majority of blinded sitters chose the reading intended for them as their own when asked to choose between two readings. This proportion is also statistically significant. These readings, as well as previously published data from 16 other readings, demonstrate what we call anomalous information reception, or AIR. That is, the reporting by mediums of accurate and specific information about the deceased with no prior knowledge, no feedback during or after the reading, and without using fraud or deception. However, whether or not this information is coming from the deceased cannot be determined with accuracy data alone. We address this with our operation research program, which will be discussed in a future video. Please visit www.windbridge.org to learn more about Windbridge Research Center research, to access our free educational materials, and to sign up to receive our monthly emails. Thank you.